Um, all right, I'm gonna continue the game. So, I, I, this is not the very, very beginning. I'm not gonna start over. This is still pretty early, even though I did beat the first boss. Um, and I'm not an expert at this, but I'll try to explain like what, kind of what's going on. The, the story of the world is like you suddenly just wake up and you don't remember anything and you don't know where you are and you're just in the darkness. But as you like discover things, you start to remember stuff about them, right? So as you fight like a bandit, you're like, oh yeah, there's bandits in this world and they're like jerks. And like, you know, you you see a stick and we go, you go, oh yeah, we, we could build fire with that. You know, so you learn things. That's the story of the world. And you're meeting other people who have also forgotten. And uh, I believe um, that the the lich that I beat as the first boss was like working for some big bad that's basically draining the memories from worlds and then like basically consuming the world. So that's the story. Um, you come back to the, the, the little camp that has a couple other survivors and we're able to build based on the resources that I collect when I'm out adventuring um, different places. And you can see here, like one of the ones I can get soon, hopefully, is this refugee, which unlocks a new class, the rogue. Right now I've been playing as the warrior. I think there's three classes total, but I can't get them up there. But every time you can build something, it unlocks more cards and, uh, you know, more upgrades and stuff. I think I'm not going to get the smithy Telephone. Um, I think I'm not going to get the smithy here because uh, I want to be able to afford the refugee and unlock the next class next time. And this, some of the some of the resources overlap. All right, so um, they track your stats, show you how many. Um, they have the stats are showing you like what you've beaten and what you've done, and then you go to the expedition. And, uh, oh, this is the first time I'm able to do chapter two. Oh, I've never done chapter two. Okay, so I've done chapter one as the warrior, and it just gives you kind of like a synopsis here. I, I have not, I have not done. All right, so I guess we'll try chapter two. I'm going to have no idea what I'm doing here. So in chapter two, enemies will have one to two abilities as opposed to zero to one. Enemy strength minus 5%, enemy strength 0%, okay. Enemy strength uh, growth, every loop they gain 3% strength. Bonus resource, oh, we get more resources. Nice. Hi. I am up a wall. You are up a wall. I just got a call from some company I've never heard of before. Yeah. That wants to sell Pops's place. Really? And I said, how did you get this number? Yeah. And they're like, there was an internet listing and it was connected to this number. And when we looked through the providers, this is what we called. Like, are, are you kidding? Yeah. Like that's Super so, stock. That's so shiesty. Yeah. I just told them to take us off the list and not call again. Yeah. Because if we're going to go with somebody, we're going to go with the person we've already spoken yeah. with. The person who's already viewed we're, or, we're, or their company. Or you go for the people that don't literally like find out who died and then they call those true, people. True. Yes. Maybe that. Yeah. That 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 also helps. That helps. Yes. Yeah. Um, Sorry for the interrupt. That's okay. My frustration. Okay. All right. I'm gonna try chapter two. I have, I have no idea. Let's see. Let's see what goes on here. Okay. So here you get a loop, and your character is this little white figure right there. You're gonna walk around the loop. And you have to fight whatever monsters you touch. So we have some slimes here coming up. As soon as we touch those, we'll get into a fight. I don't control how fa how he moves, and I don't control the fighting. But I can pause to make it a planning phase or unpause. And at this point, there's nothing I can do. So we're gonna just unpause, yeah. You remember by playing this game before? Yeah, I played this a couple weeks ago, just for a little bit, just for like an hour or two, because it was like a free demo. Uh, but now now the game is officially out. It's like 12 twelve dollars and change and uh, I think it's pretty neat. All right, so this is how it works. You're gonna come up to the slime oh, 27 Whoop. months. That's so cool <laughs> yeah. Rubber llama 
That was just a few weeks ago. It might have been like, yeah, it was like the beginning of February. <laughs> Rubber llama. Thank you so much for the 27. Yeah. It was the beginning of February. It's like the first, first or second day of February. Um, okay. So we beat the slime. If we got any treasure, it would fill in over here. We didn't get any treasure, unfortunately. But we got this meadow. Okay, so the meadow gives you a little bit of flavor text and says heals two hit points at the start of each day. All right. Now, I can put this different places in the world. Basically, anywhere not near the path. Um, so, for now, I'm just going to hold on to it for now. Because we're this, this will heal two hit points at the start of each day. And you can see up here the day progress. That's this bar up here. So, every time I another day goes by, these meadows would heal me a little bit. But I'm just going to go to the next one first. Let's see what we can get. All right, I have two meadow. So, here. Before it turns a new day, I'm going to throw one up there. Now, it just gave me a resource because I put down a, uh, a meadow. It gave me a ration. If I get 12 rations, it forms a whole food supply. All right. And if anybody has any questions as, I, as we go through this, let me know. All right, I'm just gonna put both down for now. Okay, and that gave me a couple more rations. Fighting a slime. Again, I don't control the combat at all. They just, they they fight based on their stats. You can see my stats here, here. Damage and the hit point per day is pretty, they're pretty low. But we just got our first uh, piece of gear. So I got found armor. Max hit points goes up by 84, so 250. And I'll put this in this slot. And just so you guys are aware, as a warrior, these are the only active slots. I have four slots of gear. These other ones here that are grayed out, these are for the other classes. So, we get these four slots. I also got another meta, which I didn't place yet. Okay. Can you guys hear the game okay? Sorry. Alright, um... All right, we got another. Thanks for giving me another armor. This one's slightly better. So when I re, when I replace a gear, this gear will go away. Okay. So when you replace them, you don't get it back. Yeah. Um, and we got a vampire mansion. Okay. So it adds vampires to battles on adjacent tiles. It doesn't actually spawn vampires on the path, but if you fought like this slime and you were near a vampire mansion, a vampire would spawn in there. I am. A noob with almost no gear. I am not going to put the vampire mansion down just yet. <laughs> you feel like the music needs to be increased and the sound effects down? I agree. I actually, that's exactly how I feel. So let's try to do that. Let's put the sound effects way down and music up a little bit. There we go. Let's try that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I want to gear up before I put something like a vampire mansion down. Um, the enemies get more and more powerful every time you do a complete loop, but also the gear that you get increases too. Yeah. Um, Atari 2600. Actually, no, this is a 2021 release. In fact, it's a this week release. It's one of the most current games you can get, FPS. Very interesting. All right, here we go. <laughs> yeah, right. It's true. All right. This is a great card. All right. So I got a treasury here. And I got rocks. Well, um, so the treasury gives a random resource after placing anything on an adjacent tile. And it can't be built adjacent to anything. So you have to find an open space. But here's here's a little secret. And this is why this game is, is clever. Um... There are things they don't tell you. And one of the things is, for example, if you put a treasury down and you fill out all the spaces, something special happens. And so I'm gonna try to do that and I'll show you what it does. There's lots of little like secrets like that that make this game interesting. All right, so we put the treasury way out here and I have a couple of extra meadows. So you're gonna see extra resources go into my pack now because I'm putting them next to the treasury and that's what the treasury does. 
All right, let's put another meadow over there. And we'll get even more. Um, and I'm gonna do something different with this rock. I could use the rock uh, with the treasury and uh, it would help fill out this quicker, but I wanna show you guys something else with the rock. So I'm gonna put the, the rock over here. Now the rock gives you plus two more hit points and I get plus two more hit points on top of that for every adjacent rock or mountain, okay? So the more mountains we put together, the more hit points we get, which is beautiful. All right, let's continue. All right. You don't like this trend of making old looking games? I lived through that time already. I don't want to go back. Tolfonos. It's, it's tricky. It's tricky. What it does do is it allows them to make more creative crazy games like this, right? Because it's not as expensive for as doing like fully three modeled, you know, animated everything. But at the same time, it's an art form in and of itself. And I think there's certain, you know, pixel art or retro graphics games that are just artistically very beautiful and complicated despite having that retro feel. But yeah, I, I kind of know what you mean sometimes. Yeah, like I would love like, I would love Slay the Spire to have, like, a really, like, newer-looking aesthetic, just personally. But I don't mind this. I think this looks pretty cool. All right, so we uh, just got the village. First, they'll feed you, then they'll make you work. So every time you hit the village, you heal 20, which is great, but they give you a quest. The quest turns out, from what I've seen, to pick a random monster on the map and make it, like, double health or an elite mob of some sort. So a harder creature. So you get the healing every time you hit the village, but then you get a, a hard quest to do. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna put the village. Let's see, we're almost at the start again. Um, I don't really need healing. We're gonna heal when we get to the start. Let's put the village, I guess, over here. Why not? Consequently, putting a vampire mansion right near a uh, village is pretty fun to do. I'm not gonna do that right now because my character sucks. I also got a sword over here. So we'll watch my damage go up. My damage is four to six currently. Now it's eight to 12. That music's great. Um, If a little loud. Sorry. Let's try that. All right, here we go. All right, so I'm trying to keep up with uh, conversation and chat at the same time. I'm trying to keep a track of my uh, equipment and stuff. Hey folks, we're coming out with a new machine with 8K graphics and 200 billion color shades and just look at what we can do with it. Yeah, no, I, I kind of like, it. I mean, children, like look at, look at a game like Children of Morda, right? That's like pixel art uh, graphics and uh, it's absolutely stunning. All right, here we go. Ritual Sword. This one does a four to six with two magic damage. Okay, so that's a little bit better. I have a ring, 10% chance to counter an attack, and I've got a shield, three defense. All right, so now we're fully equipped. Uh, there we go. Another vampire mansion. I'm not gonna do anything with that just yet. Alex, is this feels like a bog game? It is. It, it looks like a bog game and definitely is. All right, we're about to finish our first loop, which should give us a heal. The enemies will get stronger. We'll get better loot. By the way, the cards that are coming up, um, you get to choose which cards. I, I forgot to show you guys how to uh, change the deck around before you come into this, but you can, in between battles, you you change the cards that you get. So this is a battlefield card. I love this. Unfortunate that we just made a full loop, but what happens is at the every time you make a full loop, it spawns a chest. If you get to the chest, you can get extra loot, which is great, but also enemies 
that are on adjacent tiles can become ghosts. So you don't want that. You don't want, the ghosts make fights harder. So what I, I uh, the best thing I've found to do with a battlefield card is put it somewhere at the beginning of the loop. That way, when you finish the loop, you'll get the treasure like almost right away. And what that does is you get to take advantage of the higher level loot like right away. For that whole loop, you've got a higher level loot. And rather than taking, you know, getting it at the end of the loop where it's about to become obsolete. So put it at the beginning and also don't make the beginning of your loop super difficult so that you can just get to this treasure and get a, a, a start on the rest. So that's just a little tip. You'll probably understand that later a little bit better. But here we go. I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put it right here. So this will start spawning chests when I make a full loop. Take care, Elf on a Shelf. You can only go counterclockwise. You don't actually control how he goes at all. Yeah, all I can do is stop him and start him. I can pause and unpause. I don't control him uh, going on the path, and I do not control him fighting. Okay, so we have um, a mountain. Mountain is similar to the rock. It's like a rock, but really big. Right. Uh, plus five hit points for each adjacent rock or mountain. So we're going to put this over here. Road Lantern um, decreases the maximum number of monsters on adjacent tiles. So I'm going to pick an area like, let's say like right here. I'm going to try to fill this area up with dangerous things. Um, and this Road Lantern might... You know what? I'm going to actually... I'm going to wait. There's no need to get this to, to use that card just yet. I'm going to make a dangerous area and then use a Road Lantern to kind of calm it down a little. It's like a rock, but bigger. That's good right in there. All right, we got a meadow, so let's use it on the the uh, treasury over here. Oblivion will erase any established tile or erases monsters from the road. So if there's a, a tile that has monsters that are too tough, I can destroy that. I can say, hey, I don't want this treasury here. I can destroy that. I can destroy the battlefield. So basically, it's a handy card. It's not too dangerous right now, but you'll see the danger increases. All right, we've got other choices for rings. Nothing too good yet. All right, new quest. See, I just passed the village that healed me a little. This guy became elite because of the village quest. All right, that, that the one slime had three treasures. Uh, slightly better chest piece. Man, we're getting crappy loot. We got a cemetery here. This spawns a skeleton every three days. All right. Um, I'm going to let myself go around the loop a bit. Let's put it over here. And I'm now I'm going to use the road lantern here so it doesn't spawn too much. There we go. All right, different shield, slightly better shield. All right, this is a tough fight here. There's an elite. You can see the quest goal for the monster is plus 200% hit points. Okay, so this one's gonna take a while to kill. I do have three healing potions over here, which will get automatically used as my health goes low. All right, the quest is done, and we've got a, it looks like a, like, uh, upgraded rarity level one weapon. So shame it's still level one, but it does give us vampirism 6% and regen per second, 0.6%. This will heal us quite a bit. Uh, we're going to put the meadows over here. Put the extra resources. These resources is what you want to bring back to your, your settlement so that you can buy upgrades. A kind gesture. Look at that. Somebody just bought Loop Hero. Was that you then, Yar? Thank you so much. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Let me know on Monday or whenever you come back. Let me know if you uh what you think. You're gonna have fun with it this weekend, I think. Pretty neat. You sold me again. I know this this one wasn't too expensive though. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Um, we've got a grove here. Uh, this spawns a rat wolf every two days. I'm going to actually put that near the graveyard here, the cemetery, because I want it in range of this lantern. So actually, I'm going to put it right here. It's in the range of the lantern right there. Meat man, this game is so addicting. I know. I spent like two and a half hours, three hours like, like that. You bought it on the Epic Store, which is a better deal for you? The same. The same. Yeah, Hooter. If you use uh, the Bog Otter Creator Code on Epic Games, or if you buy on Humble, it's the same. Every once in a while, Epic Games will have like a promotion, and it'll be like a higher, you know, cut for the uh, for the partner. But there isn't one that I'm aware of right now. Okay, so um, but thanks for asking. We've got another mountain over here. We've got a spider cocoon, which will spawn a spider on an adjacent tile once a day. Let's put it over there. We're getting more enemies now. The blood grove can only be placed near forests, okay? And its root devours enemies that have less than 15% hit points left. Okay, so it actually helps you in combat. Um, I'm gonna put one... I'm gonna put it here because there's a reason for it. If, if I can get two blood groves in, next to each other, I think that does something. So I'm gonna try to get another, another uh, grove right next to it at some point. So you kind of build the world as you play. All right, since we, we uh, finished another loop, our enemies go up another level, right? And uh, here's the treasure chest. This is that chest that I was talking about that we got from the battlefield. So we gotta we gotta fight it. Doesn't fight back. Sometimes I it sometimes it's like a mimic. I don't know what does that. Okay, you see the treasure we just got from here? We we got two level three things. We have all level one currently. So this is way better shield. It's giving us uh, double defense. It does damage to all, which is like a it's like a cleave. Uh, extra defense on top of it, and then regen per second. So, that's great. And then this ring, 9% vampirism, 4% attack speed, and another, uh, cleave effect. So, great equipment there. That was beautiful. So those battlefields. Whenever you get a battlefield, put them near the start of your, uh, your loop. Alright, here's another treasury, just like this. We're not finished with this one yet, but we can put this over here. And we'll work on that one next. Okay, we just need uh, two more meadows. And I'll show you what happens if you completely surround the treasury. This sword's not, not as good. Well, this sword does more damage. Hmm. Should we up the damage and get rid of the vampirism? <sighs> Probably. Probably. We're gonna we're gonna probably replace that soon anyway. Do you ever go to a new loop or do you always stay and build this one? Okay, so subliminal snail. Once this gets too hard, this gets increasingly difficult the more loops you get. You can see it's already a lot more complicated than the first loop. If you start to like lose ground, you don't your gear like you get crappy gear or you know, the monsters start to overpower you. You've got to make a choice. You can hit this run button, which sucks that it's right where I am. There's a run button right here, okay? If I hit it now, I'm giving up 40% of the resources I found. And this will bring me back to camp. There might be some story to go through. Um, and then I can build and upgrade my camp based on these resources. So giving up 40% is a little rough. Um, if I make it all the way around and I hit the run button when I'm at the cozy camp, I keep 100% of the resources. And if you die, so far when I've died, I've only kept 30%. So it seems like it's 100%. You can keep 100%, 60%, or 30% from what I've seen so far. So, you keep going as long as you can, though. 
and then the next time you come in it's a brand new loop you start all over you have a chance to change your cards out and all that kind of stuff but all your equipment and stuff goes back to zero because remember your mind you keep every time you leave camp your your part of the story is you your character forgets everything they know All right, we got two more level two rings here. I don't think we're going to use any of these. When this gets all fill, full up with uh, equipment, you'll start bumping out the ones at the bottom. You can rearrange them if you say, no, I kind of want to keep that one for now because you could hold back and want to swap things in. Um, if you don't have enough room, the bottom uh, right one here kind of gets salvaged and you get materials for that. So, yeah. So are you interacting with the game beyond start and stop and gear change? Start, stop, gear changing, and world building. So I'm placing all these tiles. I'm deciding where the monsters are going to spawn, you know? Um, so you have, and the placement is part of the strategy. Like I was explaining earlier, this chest that appears at the start of each loop, you want to put that at the very beginning of a new loop. It's because the new loop will up your treasure that you're getting to a new level and you want to get first dibs at that right away so that you can use it that entire level yeah so there's a lot of like little strategy about where to place things and then in between missions you decide like which cards to bring in your deck for the next day yeah but it's interesting that you don't control the movement or the combat on your character all right here's a different looking shield um Actually, not bad. That's, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna keep the level three. I have another road lantern here, and these stack. So if I know that I'm gonna put all the, the worst monsters up here, I can really decrease or decrease the, um, the number of uh, bad guys that can spawn there. So maybe I'm gonna do that. Let's put another, another road lantern up there. Not ready for vampires just yet, I don't think. Okay, we passed the village. So that buffed a monster somewhere or gave us some other quest. We got an armor here, level three. Look at this, look at this upgrade. 273 hit points. Up from 92, plus some other uh, bonus stats like evasion. So if you want to like play this while eating dinner, it's a relatively minor interaction requirement. Yes. Yeah, true. Yeah, you can pause it at any time if you want to concentrate on conversation, you know, or do something else. You can just keep it paused. Uh, while it's running, it's not that intense even. I should have placed these, but all right. All right, so here we go. Here's the, um, I'm just going to use, actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wait until the end of the loop and try to complete this, but we can do this. We can put this next to the treasury, get the extra resources. Uh, we're working more on the rocks here. Again, we wanna put the rocks and the mountains near each other because you get bonus hit points for every adjacent rock or mountain. Okay. Um, We're gonna fight our first skeleton here, I think. It's not too bad. We're doing fine so far. All right, that's a level four ring. Uh, let's see what the level four ring does. Vampirism, 6%, counter 12%. Hmm. It's a lot of countering, but I kind of like the attack speed and the damage to all for now. We might eventually uh, get rid of that. All right, so here we go. Um, I could wait on this. I'm trying to decide if I should wait on this. All right, so I'm going to wait till the end of this loop and then I'm, I'm going to complete this meadow. Or this uh, treasury, sorry. Sorry for being indecisive there. Gear disappears when you swap it out. Yeah, you do not get to keep the gear when you take it off. Yep. It also, uh, this inventory, like when I get a new item, it'll push this inventory down here and salvage it. You'll see materials go up, go up to here. And what you're noticing with the materials up here is once I get to a certain amount, 
of preserved pebbles, right? When I get 10 of these, it turns into one of these. When I get 12 of these, it turns into one of these. So that's this is them just stacking up multiple times into the higher resource level. Um, I got a rock. Let's kill the spider. All right, this is... Yeah, we, we could really use a better weapon. Here's another village. All right, villages will heal me when I enter, but give me a quest. Um, I guess let's... Put one here, I guess? All right, I'm gonna start filling in this one. All right, we just we just passed the level, which means the enemy level and my treasure level just increased. Now I'm going to use this meadow, and watch what happens when you completely surround a treasury. It gives you a whole bunch of bonus resources. Oh, I got into a fight. Damn it! So this is one of these hidden things that they don't tell you about you, but you discover when you're placing stuff. I got a whole bunch of extra resources and this loot. And look, I got like this legendary loot pole arm here, 11 to 17 damage. This does 10 to 14. Two defense, two damage to all and regen per second. That does the most damage. This is the nice counter. Well, let's, let's throw that in. Now I got that. Okay, so the reason why I waited till, uh, till the start of the, uh, the new loop is, so this would be better treasure because it's just going it, that, that's just how it works um, Now and one last thing when I put Nine mountains and, and or rocks around each other I Get a whole bunch of bonus resources it becomes a mountain peak Which adds 120 hit points to my character plus five additional hit points for every adjacent mountain or rock tile and but now the downside It's gonna spawn a harpy every two days somewhere on the map yeah. If you leave some space on one side around a treasury, you can build it. Yeah, that's true. You can double dip. I did that last night. I don't know why I didn't do that this time. That's a good point. You can du you can actually put this. You can put the second treasury like here, so you double dip on the one space between them between the two. Yeah. Um, all right. So now that I've got one mountain peak done. Um, I'm gonna just start using all my resources around this treasury. Uh, one other little tip and trick. By the way, this just spawned a goblin camp. It's because I placed 10 mountain or rock tiles. Every 10 mountain or rock tiles you place, you're gonna get a goblin camp on your circuit. I could use Oblivion to get rid of it if I didn't want them, but there it is. Um, one last thing with the uh, oh I don't have another meadow I'll, I'll teach you one more thing when I get, when I get another meadow. For now I'm gonna go here. With that this is a grove. I'm gonna put that here because I want to get two uh, blood groves next to each other, if possible. Here's our loot. Level four armor, way better. A lot more hit points. Uh, Subliminal says, I was mucho much interested in this game now that I'm over the visual graphics hurdle and Bog has explained it. I found myself drawn in. Yeah. I, I, I felt the exact same way, Subliminal Snail. I was like, there's so much buzz around this, but when I look at it, it's like, eh. And then I just started playing it, and then, yeah. And then three hours went by. Um, okay, we got a new... No, that's the old spear. Got a new loop here. Not much going on in terms of monsters on the bottom here. Probably make that a little bit more dangerous. Got another mountain. Yeah, not much going on in the beginning of there. Here's a goblin. These guys are a little tougher. They attack fast. Level four armor. So I want 1.2 per, per second regen or evasion 
12% total. I'm gonna go with the evasion. So do you see what the quest the town gives or does it not really matter? Well, it does matter, um, but what I, what I notice most of the time it is, is see the crown over... It, they, it, from what I've seen, it only chooses a random monster and makes it elite, which like doubles the health. So it makes it makes the circuit harder to get if you use the village. All right, here we go. Look at this. See, this is flying in from the mountain peak. This is a harpy. See the harpy spawned? It's going to be flying in and choose a place to land. Yeah. Thorny Septic says, I missed when you started streaming this. Does it have a tutorial to help you get going? Yeah, it does. It does. It does not explain all these little... I'm giving you guys some tips and stuff that I've just discovered through playing. Um, like, I, But I think that's part of the appeal of the game is... Yeah, when you put like nine mountains together, you know, nine, nine mountains or rocks together becomes this mountain peak, which does entirely different things. You know, uh, I think that's kind of cool that you, you can figure those kind of things out. But it doesn't teach you every little thing. Yeah. It's probably the type of game that you'll eventually look up online, a wiki or a video or something like that and go, all right, teach me all the things that I'm sure there are secrets in this game that could help. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, not everything is out in the open. All right, here we go. Skeleton now. I haven't really been in danger this run. That doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes I struggle a lot in the beginning. Um... I'll keep what armor we have. A kind gesture. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for using my humble link, gang. All right, here's the harpy. And anytime you can pause the combat just by highlighting the creatures too, and you can see their stats and stuff. Well, that was a lot of treasure. I think it was all crap. Yeah. Well, what's this? 10 to 14 with 13% vampirism. I'm doing okay for now. Spiders aren't that tough. They have very low health. He says as he gets slaughtered by spiders. By the way, while you're fighting, you can say, hey, I want to pause it. You can kind of tell the game to pause at the, as soon as the combat is over so it doesn't move. All right, so one more thing about meadows when you're placing meadows. See, when, when you just place a meadow normally, it gives you two hit points at the start of each day. And I explained earlier that the, the day progress is up here, this bar here. If you put the meadow, however, adjacent to anything besides meadow, it actually becomes a blooming meadow, which will heal you three hit points at the start of each day. So, I know that seems like only a little bit, but you can see already I have blooming meadow, blooming meadow, there, there, you know. The, the more you can get out of them, the better. Yeah. Do you always stay ahead of the monsters in terms of power? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, in fact, it gets out of control pretty, pretty soon. You'll see. <laughs> I get surprised. I feel invincible for a while. We're just like, oh yeah, I've got this. Nothing can beat me. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh crap. Yeah. Uh, all right, another mountain. Remember, every time I place a mountain, I'm getting a little bit extra hit points. What is the bar uh, on? Um, what is the bar underneath the day timer? This one. When this bar is filled, the boss of this chapter will appear. On the campfire tile. Yeah. That's when the boss comes. Yeah. A level up is over here. Underneath my health. Underneath health is my uh, hero's health and experience points. Oh, that gargoyle literally landed on me.
There's a bug that should be mentioned. If you equip items mid-fight, your attack speed resets for that fight. Gesture. Oh, really? Hey, thank you so much. Who got this? Thank you for using my link. Is that you, Thorny Subject? That might have been you. Thank you, Thorny Subject. I hope you have fun with it. Uh, there's a bug that should be mentioned. If you equip items mid-fight, your attack speed resets for that fight. Resets to what, though? Like it's bad to do that? Maybe I shouldn't equip things in combat then. I don't think I do that too often anyway. Alright, we got a new day. New treasure. Um, look at this shield. Level 5. That's just all defense. 20 defense. I wish I knew what that did, you know? They don't really tell you, like, what does defense do exactly? Uh, oh, by the way, I'm getting a perk. You don't you don't start with this. This is something you kind of unlock later on, but um, you get perks as you progress. Every morning, the hero's sword is filled with sunlight, causing it its next attack to deal times two damage to all for one attack, I guess, huh? 10% uh, 10 chance upon hit of stunning target for one second. Defense is increased by one after every loop. Hmm. I'm gonna try the stun one. I don't know if that was the best one. 10% chance to stun. I figured that I can use all the time. A kind gesture. Another one? Another one? Who's this one? Is that you, FPS? Thank you guys. I hope you guys are have, will have fun with it. I hope you I hope you guys like the game. <laughs> I'm having fun with it. Thank you, FPS. Um, another one. Yeah. You can't complain about the disc-based requirements. No, it's a it's a light game. Oh, this is a bad fight. I should have I should have seen this. See, this is gonna hurt. This one's gonna hurt. I could have used an Oblivion on this. Yeah, this this is bad. There's nothing I can do at this point. I can't I can't use Oblivion on them now. Oh snap! No crap. We beat it, barely. I don't know what's gonna happen here though. All right, let's see. First of all, we can get this. Let's put this in. 54 health up to 66. We got this shield. Defense ring eight. I think I forgot that I had treasure in here too. All right, that was close. That was close. I think... I'll, I'll tell you this, uh, usually I like to save the Oblivion to see it help. I'll, I won't spoil. I don't want to spoil it. But I usually like to save the Oblivion. Uh, but I might need their help here. I'm going to have to fight at least one of these. So let's see if I, let's see how this first one goes. Oh, he evaded. Don't evade. Okay, 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 okay. That no no, now there's two of them there. Definitely no. Alright, I'm gonna use this. This will give me a couple more resources. What's my regen? It, sh it says it right over here. 0.6. It's not good. I think I should try to run. It destroyed my forest. Yes, when I did the obliterate, it'll destroy whatever's there and all the enemies. 
I gotta fly. I gotta go. I have to run. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna only I'm gonna lose 40%. But otherwise I'm gonna die and I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna lose at least 70% then. Retreat. Okay. Alright, so when you come back, sometimes there's dialogue and story with the people that are in the town. Um but I didn't advance the story at all. So I guess that's why they're not. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I've only done five expeditions. Four, four hours of gameplay. Alright, um, yes, and I can unlock the rogue. So I'm gonna do that. And where are we gonna put the rogue thing? He would be in the corner. Oh, you can't be in the corner? Did that work? Oh, I did. Okay. Survivor's tents. Did I do it? Did I build the thing? Let's see. Expedition. No, I didn't. What did I do? I spent my resources? Oh. You have to build the rogue next to a specific building? Really? So that is, that is, oh, can only be built next to a field kitchen. Ah, so where's the field kitchen? Here, and I already have this. Only in the yellow circle. Build. Ah, okay. There we go. There we go. Sorry. Hey, look, he looks like me. All right. There is an exile, even an exile hero. There is exile, even an exile hero. Don't be hard on the lost souls who have found their salvation in wine and gambling. Sit down instead and pick yourself a poison to drink. That's not why I'm here. It's so strange. This place and its surroundings, they're familiar to me. Now we're talking. So did you make your living off the road? A bit of robbery, maybe? Or collecting bounties for someone's unlucky head? It's as if someone else knew and did all this, and now I have their knowledge and skills. And now I somehow literally have two acres. Two aces. Two acres? Two acres up my sleeve. And I think I stole someone's purse, too. Ha. Wait. That's my coin purse. You don't believe me? Oh, well. Feel free to come by if you want to discuss your new trade. I didn't become this good with knives by working in the kitchen, you know. All right, so that was us just basically saying we're now a thief, right? You can upgrade these things, too, if you have resources. Um, so what that will do is should let me... Okay, I can play as the rogue now. You can see the uh, equipment slots change. So now it looks like you equip boots instead of rings. The rogue can receive trophies after killing enemies in battle and exchange them for equipment in the camp. Has 5% vampirism from the start, 10% bonus for any effect for every equipped item with the same effect. I don't know, I'm not sure how that works. Oh yeah, it's double weapons too. Yeah, you're right, double weapons. That's pretty neat. Yeah, no shield. Oh, I like that. So that's completely different. Oh yeah, additional class stats. So so the warrior gets vampirism. Additional class stats, crit chance, evade, defense, and crit damage. Interesting. Is vampirism good? Uh, it's good. It's like uh, life drain. Vampirism, you, you get health back. And you drain life. The vampires in the uh, actual expedition are uh, tough, though. Um, this is where I was showing you before um, the cards. So these are the, these are the cards that I was getting at the bottom of the screen. You can change them. Like, if I want swamps... Instead of groves, I can do that. Um, how this screen works is I think it's... Um, 
This is the minimum number from each section you need for your deck. And I right now I have a maximum of 12 cards allowed. Yeah. So. There you go. What do you guys think? Seems pretty interesting, right? Uh, Gamesta, thanks for following. Should we play one more? Should we go? Should we do one more loop? One more loop? Yeah? Alright, let's do one more loop. Let me just tell Azaria. Going to do one more loop. Alright. And we're going to try the rogue. Do I want to change the deck at all? I think the deck is okay. Uh, let's see what happens. The feel, uh, the one more loop. It's not going to be one more loop. One more, not one more loop. You know what I mean? One more run. One more run. Thank you so much to whoever snagged that. Who got it? One more. All right, here we go. Number of trophies to exchange for rewards in camp. All right, so when we get back to camp, we can exchange these rewards. All right, we'll see how this works. Is that how, that's how you get loot with the uh, with the rogue? Oh, we even look different. Oh, that's cool. We look like a little gremlin. All right. Oh, we're not getting loot. We're not gonna get loot. The loot went in here. How funny. I'm gonna hold on to the meadow. Where'd I hear about this game from? We, we, it was one of the demos, the free demos that, uh, during the Steam, like, indie demo showcase a couple weeks ago. Like, at the beginning of February. And I, I just downloaded it and played it on stream. We actually streamed it. Yeah. How's the rogue feeling? I just started. It's weird so far. Like, you're not going to get loot. You're going to get trophies. So you have to... You will get a big power boost every time you get to the camp. But no power increase on the way, on the way around. Um... Right, they're giving me a village. I really wanted to get a treasury before we started putting stuff down. Um, you still get loot on the loot from things that give loot directly. Like what? Oh, chests don't give loot while rogue? It'll have to be treasuries and stuff. And those are pretty rare to count. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to save it. I don't think I want this yet. There's a mountain. I can start working on a mountain. Alright. Rogue plays different as Rogue should. It does, yeah. But I wonder if you should have... If you should even bother with the... Um, what is it? The burial grounds or whatever it's called. I think we can do spiders. Let's do spiders up here. Let's see what happens. You upgrade gear in town then? 
What, for the rogue? No, like right when we get back to camp here, right here. So now we're here. Oh, damn. So what does it do? Oh, it fills it up for one for each? Holy crap. Wow. All right, the best boots. 3% evasion, two damage. I think these are the best boots. Best weapon, seven to 11. Eight to 12. Chest piece, 88 armor, 96. Second weapon. All right, that's what we get for this run. All right, let's see what else we get. All right, we can't put down the Blood Grove. Could do more spooters. Let's put some spooters over here. Put down the other Road Lantern. Let's double stack it up here. Um. I don't know how powerful we are. I don't, we, we don't have a lot of hit points, that's for sure. All right, I guess we gotta start building the mountain. I need some more health. More trophies means higher quality. Always a full box for when I see it. Okay, got it. And I was worried and hesitant to put things down like vampires, but then realized it scales based on the loop. So you should be, so you should be fine fighting anything on the early loops. Really? I I, I hesitated on the vampires, <laughs> and I'm like I'm holding the skeletons too because they're a little tougher. I don't know. I'm a little nervous. All right, I'll trust you. We can one-shot spiders, that's nice. It's kind of nice not having to lo constantly look at your loot, though, I guess, huh? So I can put a vampire down right away? Really? Okay. All right, we'll have a spooky little corner over here. Let's put the village. All right, this could be a huge mistake, you ready? I'll put a village down, I'm gonna put the vampire mansion right next to it, which turns it into a ransacked village, spawns up to four ghouls once per loop, and after three successful loops, it will turn into something useful. And it's actually really great. But if you can survive the ghouls. Now there's four ghouls. Watch me get slaughtered here. Nope, okay, we got the vampire down. You're right, it's much weaker, huh? This was a bad plan. We got really hurt doing this. Hey, it's good loot though. It's random, FPS. All right, um, I've been holding the meadows because I really want a treasury to spawn, but we'll see. Yeah, it's random and never what you want, exactly. You finished up work before I left? Yay! We're going a little bit longer today. Just a little bit. We're just doing one more one more run of the of Loop Hero here. All right, this will give us a bonus to our health. A whole bunch of extra crafting mats. Uh, let's put the Grove down. And then I can turn it into a Blood Grove. Okay. 
And we're about to get a whole bunch of treasure. Yeah, and a harpy. Yeah, that's true. And harpies. Five gifted subs! Nimni! Nimni, what you doing? Holy crapples! Thank you so much for the five bomb of subs! Hi! Hi. I'm going one more loop. Hi. Just one more loop. That's what the name of this game should be. Nimni, thank you so much for the five gifted subs! That's gonna kick off a giveaway. Did you know that? A kind gesture. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna make some rice crispy squares. Ooh, nice. How many kids with ADHD does it take to change a light bulb? Let's go play with our bikes. <laughs> RFD, thank you so much for the 500 bits. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Um, One of our mods, could you kick off a giveaway when you have a chance, please? We're gonna do a Game Vault giveaway because we hit our goal of five newer gifted subs. Thank you so much. Thank you, Piggy Fluff. Happy Friday to you, Nimni. Good to see you. We're playing uh, Loop Hero, which is pretty darn addicting. All right, we're about to uh, finish up this loop. And here we go, let's see what our loot is. I wish it sorted it, you know what I mean? So I could like compare. All right, so this is 10 to 16. 16 to 24 on this one. We're not getting any like special powers on our weapons. This one has magic damage, but that's not great. Uh, 16, do I see, I hear 17. Do I hear 18? All right, here's our second weapon. Uh, looks like we got these boots and these, these boots. These boots look better. And chest piece, 256. Crit damage, 30%. Azaria, thank you so much. Thanks for the bits. Oh, you kicked off the hypey train. Hey, Fizz. Hey, Fizz farts. All right, hype train gang. Unlock some emotes. 100 bits or more. New subs, resubs, gifted subs. They all count toward the hype train. They really, really need a, a new set, don't they? I think they're due. And he says, don't say that. 90% of the games Nikonis and I buy on Steam come from watching you play. <laughs> I'm sorry, Nimni. <laughs> uh, how are you guys doing, by the way? Have you guys seen, like, all the crazy Dauntless stuff? Lots of Dauntless changes. I haven't gotten sucked back in. Gesture. Oh, thank you, Dublinari. Because thank you. Friday and wonderful community. And thanks, Thorny Subject for the 100 as well. Yeah. All right, um, did I pick a chest piece? No. Crit damage, attack speed encounter, or more hit points. Let's do the attack speed encounter. All right, here we go. Give me that treasury. Here's a vampire. What is that? He summoned a swarm of bats. Oh, that's because he has special abilities now. Wow. We're dealing with monsters with specials. So special. All right, I want another grove right near it. Um, I'm gonna save the mountain for when we get a treasury. Do we want more vampires, you think? Trying to get us. Uh, I guess we should do it. The vampires over there. I'm thinking about getting rid of the vampire for this one, making that an easier fight. But I don't know if I'm going to need Oblivion for the for the end boss or not. Um, I'm going to get rid of that one. Oh, we're filling up on cards here. We gotta get you gotta give me a treasury soon. You gotta give me a treasury. Another village. Should I do another ghoul village? 
You can build around your campfire. Oh, I know. I know I've got room down here. A kind gesture. I like grouping stuff up near the uh, the road lanterns. Thank you, then, Yar. Thank you very much for the bits, gang. Gang, there is um, there's a game vault ga uh, raffle going on. One clam denter, max of 500. Yeah. All right, maybe we'll put a... Uh, we'll throw a village right before we heal. See, then we're going to heal right there. How about right before we hit the, the turn here? We'll put a village. The bandit camp. Okay, so because I have two villages that spawned a bandit camp. Oh, great. Thank you. Will that one still upgrade after three loops since you got rid of the vampire house? Yes. Yes, it still works because it's a ransacked village. It's it's tied to the ransacked village, not the vampire house. Yeah. Am I feeling confident? No, not particularly. We this the rogues got very low health. I still have my three healing potions, but oh, and I have a perk here. Pickpocket, 50% chance to steal a resource shard from any enemy while parrying. Second thought, get three new ones. 10% chance of simultaneously attacking two targets. Do I want to re-roll or take the fencing? I'm not, not a huge fan of the pickpocket right now. And I don't think I even have much parrying. Which one of these? Yeah. There's a lot they don't explain in this game. I agree. I agree. Oh, pow, pow, parry is counter. Oh, I have 20%. Oh. What are my current traits? I don't have any. So 50% chance 20% of the time. Yeah, let me grab the fencing. Let's try it. Thank you guys for the hype train. Choo choo. All right, putting a couple of these down. All right, let's see. I think we're in trouble. Panliel, congratulations. You know what to do. I think I'm dead. I think I'm dead, guys. We never got the treasure either. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna really hurt in here. Oh, we're gonna hit a town here that's gonna heal us a little bit. That's good. All right, hopefully we can beat this real quick. Oh good, I did a double hit. More double hits. Come on, get lucky. All right, this is okay, this is okay. I think we're all right. Road Lantern. I found you gotta put the meadows down on road to keep them alive around the route. Really? That sucks. You're probably right. I can't believe this is really unlucky to go this long without a treasury. And of course, as soon as I do this. They're gonna give me one. Another, uh, another village. 
Little town. It's a quiet village. That's a heartbeat, not a gargoyle. Sorry. I can't believe we survived the loop. All right, let's see what kind of treasure we get. All right, we got level six boots. That's quite the jump. Crit damage 11, 13, evasion. All right, we have these boots here too. 9% evasion, attack speed 16%. Wow. I guess we gotta try that. Level four armor. Crit damage. Now this is crit chance. 19%, shouldn't say crit damage. Well, I guess it is crit damage chance, I guess so. All right, that's 19. This is 40. Those are boots. Can't compare those. I think that crit chance would be pretty nice, right? Uh, weapon. 14 to 20. 20 to 30. This is going to be a much better weapon. Our weapons got much better there. I like the feel of the upgrade happening. It's real fun to complete a loop and be like, all right, we got a lot of new stuff now. All right, there's an elite spider here and a vampire. Oh, good. Quest done. Wow, we're kicking the butts. It's a lot of health. I mean, a lot of a uh, lot of damage. Yeah, one shot and everything. Come on, another blood grove. Have only one blood grove in my deck? No. Oh, I died! I didn't even see what was happening. Ah. Oh. Okay, so you keep 30% if you die. A blood grove sounds delightful. Yeah, no, the cards that you select in the deck, it's not the number of cards. The like like for example, we only have um We only have you know, one meadow, one rock shown here, but there's many in the deck. You know what I mean? I'll just keep giving you these rewards as the loops go. So it's not a one-to-one -one kind of thing. I don't even know, did I have anything I could build? No, because I lost most of the stuff I didn't get. I didn't get the smithy. So if you only chose the Grove and Village, those are the only ones that would show up or blood. Yeah, anything you select on this screen will show up in your in your loop. So changing this around will affect your strategies. Like for example, I have the ability to spawn a swamp, which spawns a mosquito every three days. But after playing Valheim, I was like, oh hell no. Oh hell no. Also, cause your healing effects like vampirism hurt you. Yeah. Yeah, you have to take two, 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 and one here. Yes. Swamp is not good. Yeah, swamp, uh... 
You can use the swamp against vampires, which is funny, but I can't imagine having a character that doesn't have vampir- like, even the rogue has vampirism. Yeah. I tried playing with the swamps. I didn't like it very much. I also don't love the beacon. 40% movement speed and 20% attack speed for all units. That includes you and them. Yeah. I don't know. I just didn't think that was overly useful. And then there's Chrono Crystals. Doubles the effect of a day passing on adjacent tiles. So I think they can hyper spawn monsters. <laughs> that seems like hyper spawning monsters. Yeah, Beacon sounds bad. Yeah, Chrono, Chrono can be interesting. Combo. But I was being a scaredy cat and using Road Lantern. So this is the build I have right now. I'm sure it gets more complex as you unlock more cards. You unlock the cards when you build stuff, right? So, for example, um... Like the Herbalist Hut. Unlock the Swamp card. This one unlocked the Blood Grove. Yeah. So you'll eventually unlock all this stuff. I think there's a, a third class to unlock too. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. 